that Super Bowl was really rough. As a Mahomes fan, this one, um, it pretty it stings pretty bad. But uh, it was a pretty ugly game, and uh, that was it. I mean, the Bucks just played better, but Mahomes. I mean, I really feel bad for Patrick, man. He put everything out there, and uh, just didn't work out. Like he did everything he could. He was giving it all, and nobody decided to help him at all. People were dropping catches. Tyreek decided to drop it. Then Daryl Williams, after Mahomes did that um, heroic somehow throw, falling to the ground, Superman type, and then nobody decided to help him. Patrick just looked on. I mean, what else can the man do? He tried to do everything, and he was basically running for his life every single play. I mean, what can you expect from Patrick? I mean, it's tough. He's my dude, but it was a difficult game, and... Uh, it wasn't a good Super Bowl for me, honestly. It wasn't too fun to watch. Give credit to the Buccaneers. They were really great. Um, Matt, give respect to that Buccaneers defense. They were the best in the NFL. And they shut us down. I mean, they shut down Patrick really well. I mean, Patrick's still really good. He's the best in the game. And there's no doubt about that. But he'll be back next year. Don't you worry. Patrick Mahomes is going to be back and stronger than ever. He's going to be on a revenge tour. This loss was tough. Because offensive line just couldn't even help him. Literally, as soon as he snapped the ball, Shaq Barrett here, JPP here, and then wh where is he supposed to go? I mean, if you saw the picture of him flinging it, that was ridiculous. I mean, what else do you want him to do? I don't understand when people say he had a bad game. No, he didn't. He did everything he could to possibly try and win this game. And then those two interceptions, I mean, one was at the end of the game. What else do you want him to do? He has to force the ball into the end zone. And then that second one, they were down 21 to 6, 20, yeah, 21 to 6 at that point. It was, it was getting out of control. He needed a big play. And both of those interceptions were off tips. So Patrick Mahomes did all he could. And by the way, he had no tackles. Obviously, we know that. No Mitchell Schwartz, no Eric Fisher. Those two tackles, that was a huge deal. Now, just imagine if Brady did not have those two tackles. Just imagine what would have happened. Time sure Tom would have gotten sacked like 50 times. Look, the Bucks won. Give them credit. It was their year. It was their day. They played really well defensively. It was honestly the best defensive um, performance I've ever seen against Patrick Mahomes. But Patrick's coming, and Mahomes boy is not going anywhere, boys. Mahomes boy is coming, and he's going to be better than ever. I trust Patrick, and he is the greatest. So, welcome back to another video on Mana Sports Talk. Just wanted to get that out really quick. I'm still a little disappointed. What happened last night, it was a bit tough for me to watch. I'm going to go ahead and break down the Super Bowl for you guys. If you didn't know, if you didn't watch the Super Bowl last night, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are your Super Bowl 55 champions, defeating the Kansas City Chiefs in a beat-up 31-9 in an outstanding fashion against Kansas City. The Buccaneers dominated the entire game, and they have won their second-ever Super Bowl in the history of that franchise. And Tom Brady, what else can you say about him? And uh, I think I've got to admit it, he's the GOAT. Even being one of the biggest Brady haters, i got to admit, he is the GOAT. Seven rings, I mean, I mean, I, they're just too much for me. It's no coincidence that as soon as Tom Brady goes to Tampa, they go straight to the Super Bowl and win it. I mean, it's just unbelievable. This man is just a champion and a winner. And he has that mentality of winning. There's no other quarterback who can compare to Tom Brady right now. Seven Super Bowl wins. And he gets it done when he has to. He does the simple things right. And he is the GOAT. And until Patrick Mahomes finishes his career. And let me tell you this. When Patrick Mahomes finishes his career, I believe he will be the GOAT. But at this time, it's Tom Brady. Respect to Tom great player look man the guy's unstoppable and it's gonna be a couple more years before he retires my prediction is he's gonna go up to 47 he just stays fit he still has that cannon in his arm it's just incredible i can't believe it but he's staying and uh gotta remember it you're never gonna see anything like this but we do have patrick mahomes and patrick mahomes offers something tom brady has never done ever and uh I think when it's all said and done, Patrick Mahomes is going to be the GOAT. We've got a long way to go, about 15 more years until we can decide that. But the three major components to what happened in the Super Bowl, it was obviously the Buccaneers' defense, the referees, 
um, with, the, with them throwing the flags, they're gonna get into that. This is not an excuse, you're gonna hear what I gotta say, and it's legitimate, people, it's legitimate. Um, we got the Bucks D, the refs, and then Tom Brady and the Buccaneers playing really lights out offensively and doing what they really wanted to do. Uh, the Chiefs defense literally had no answer. Steve Spagnuolo wasn't able to do, um, wasn't able to beat Tom Brady this time. And we're going to go ahead and start off with the officials, the referees, because that's, I think, a major component um, in this game that really, I think, tainted this Buccaneers win. So if you take a look at the penalties, the final number of penalties, the Chiefs had 11 penalties for 120 yards compared to the Bucks, who only had four for 39 i mean come on this is just messed up you never see penalties flop over to one side so much and you're gonna say well the chiefs they played so aggressive and stuff it wasn't really that it was some really terrible calls honestly that really put the game out of hand for kansas city now these are not any excuses let me get this straight even with if they had called the proper game most likely the buccaneers would have won right they played better on the day they deserve it, right? But I mean, at least let it be clean. I want to see what would have happened normally. I mean, it, it just wasn't fair enough. I mean, they weren't calling it on the Bucks, but they were being so aggressive and calling it on the Chiefs all the time. I mean, it just wasn't fair enough. Now, I would have wanted to see if they let them play. How would it have it gone if without those calls? I would have think the Buccaneers would have still won because their defense was lights out. The Chiefs could not do anything offensively, and that was the story. The Buccaneers had a great game plan. Hats off to Todd Bowles, putting up a tremendous plan, containing Patrick Mahomes. Um, by the way, this is the first time Patrick Mahomes has lost by more than one possession. The first time in the era that he's never scored a touchdown in a game. Um, it's just a lot of remarkable stuff that have come out from this game that they really feel that Patrick Mahomes I mean it's been an incredible run until now and he's gonna keep it going the Chiefs defense did not play well at all the Chiefs special team besides those field goals by Harrison Butker their punter Townsend he really messed up he shanked a couple of punts he had a 37.5 yards per kick average which is really not good at all but it's not an excuse, but it plays a major factor. It kind of taints it. It just didn't seem... It, it just didn't seem good to me. It just wasn't complete. It didn't seem fully authentic. I wish the officials would put their hands off of it. Just stop throwing the flags, man. I mean, just please. It's not right. The first one we're going to be talking about is by far the biggest shift in this game that anybody's going to have. That completely shifted the momentum towards the Buccaneers. This was the worst call, I mean, you'll ever see in a Super Bowl. We're talking about that Brady interception that was called back. Um, this was third and four at the Chiefs' 32-yard line. If you remember, this is 7:54 left in the second quarter. You can go ahead and rewind it back there, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, Brady was in the pocket, he threw it, the ball was tipped, and uh, it was intercepted by the Honey Badger Tyron Matthew. And then the officials decided to rule on the field that um, Charverius Ward was holding Mike Evans, which holding penalty, a 10-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. It gave Tampa Bay a first down um, when the Chiefs would have had the possession of the ball only down 7-3 at the moment. And uh, after this moment when the Buccaneers got the ball back, you have that offsides on the field goal, but that never would have happened. Tampa Bay went on to score a touchdown later on on this drive to make it 14-3. to You've got to realize this turnover would have had tremendous impact on this game. The momentum would have shifted towards Kansas City. The defense would be having their spirits up. Maybe the offense would get something going. You never know, but you've got to let it play out. And I have support from well um documented guys terry mccauley one of a really great nfl officials he was also tweeting out that this was a really bad call um and chris sims the former quarterback right now on nbc he also said it so it's not just me it's not excuses honestly this has actually happened and uh there's evidence of it and it's not fair at all um it completely changed this game 
um, articles as well have been published about this by 247 Sports, The Ringer, Forbes. They've mentioned this all. It's not fake. It is real, guys. Um, and that was a huge shift in the momentum. And now we're going to be talking about the other one. The second one was um, pass interference. This was um, first and 10 at the Kansas City 24-yard line. They were 18 seconds left. Um, and it was pass interference on Tyron Matthew um, when Evans was the one who pushed in to draw contact. It, this was a terrible call. Once again, Terry McCauley, Chris Sims, um, all these articles, they support me on this. Um, this was a terrible call. First of all, this was a terrible throw by Tom Brady. I don't know where he's trying to throw this ball. Last time I checked, Mike Evans is not 15 feet tall. Um, this was a completely uncatchable ball and should not have been called pass interference. There was no contact. If anything, it's just two players playing it out in the Super Bowl. It's going to be rough. Got the two best teams going at it. So, I mean, come on. You got to let them play it, right? And then nothing happened. He just threw it way too high over Evans, and that was it. And then they threw the flag after that. And then the ball is now placed at the one-yard line. Um, it's already 14-3, to three, and then they punch it in at the one, uh, making it 21 21 to 6 at halftime and pretty much out of reach for Kansas City at that point. Another bad call, maybe maybe the maybe the Bucks only score three points out of that. We'll never know. Now this penalty is a little bit questionable, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. All of these are really weird. This one was second quarter, 23 seconds left. Um, it was first and ten of the Tampa Bay 42. If you remember, this was the play where Tom Brady throws it deep down the um, left sideline to Mike Evans and um, they call pass interference on Bashad Breland. Um, it's another questionable call. If you see it's pass interference, it could be. Um, he trips him a little bit. Once again, I don't know. Maybe Mike Evans is flopping. Honestly, he barely touched his shoe. I don't think he would have honestly fell down that way. It could have been an uncatchable ball as well. But according to me, what I think is I think this is pass interference. Um, Look, he touches his shoe, he trips. I mean, the guy was reaching out. If he didn't reach out and start grabbing his legs, then they wouldn't have called it. Maybe, Mike's, maybe Mike Evans makes a spectacular catch. Maybe he doesn't. But you don't go lunging at their feet. Honestly, it's questionable. Not really sure whether it was intentional or not. I mean, he barely touched it. You know, you just don't call these ticky-tack calls there. I mean, technically, it's pass interference. But throughout the playoffs, they've been letting him play. And you can't just change it up in the Super Bowl, especially in the biggest moments. It's just not right. I mean, I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. Especially you Brady supporters. You guys never realize how fortunate you guys are to have all the calls go your way every single time. I mean, it's like you guys have unlimited lives. I hope you understand this. It's just not um, helping out at all, considering Brady gets all the help. It was just stupid. Brady gets all the help plus more from the refs and Mahomes got absolutely no help from the defense, no help from the receivers, no help from the offensive line, no help from the coaching and no help from the running backs. It is just unfortunate um, to see it be this way. And I would have loved to see it um, with Kansas City having Eric Fisher back. Those are the three questionable calls that really had a big impact on this game. Um, I mean, plus on that penalty, on that flag, he threw it very late. Once Mike Evans fell on the ground, it was incomplete, right? And then Mike Evans was like, hey, what are you doing? Like, you know, how they start complaining like little babies. But, um, and then the ref threw the flag. I mean, come on. You can't throw it so late. If it was that obvious, he would have thrown it right away as soon as he tripped. But they didn't. They threw it after that. Um, and some of these penalties, especially that one, um, where they called holding when um, Tom Brady threw that interception. It reminded me of the D Ford offside. If you remember the D Ford offside 2018 AFC Championship game, where Brady threw the game losing interception and the Chiefs are headed to Super Bowl 53 to take on um, the Los Angeles Rams. And then the officials uh, throw the flag, call D Ford offside, and then, as you know, later on, the uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots go on to win. Um, they have the championship game and then go on to win the Super Bowl, if you remember that. And uh, honestly, the Chiefs deserve to go to the Super Bowl that year, not the Patriots. I mean, you he, 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 never see those being called in those big moments. The Chiefs honestly outplayed them that day, but 
a slight mistake. You, I think that's what you're going to say. He made the mistake, and Brady makes you pay for it. And that was the story of that game. But it just reminded me of that, okay? So um, now we're going to be talking about, um, you know, basically what happened in this game through st statistics. Um, Mahomes had three sacks, but he had pressured 29 out of his 58 dropbacks, which is by far the most in any Super Bowl. Ooh. It just tells you he was pressured half the time he went to throw the ball. And that is just stupid, honestly. Um, I mean, if you look at his uh, chart here, where Mahomes is literally running all over the place, the movement of the quarterbacks, Brady is pretty much stuck right here. Mahomes is going there. He's going left, right, backwards. I don't know where he's going. I mean, he's just trying to save his life, honestly. He's just trying to protect himself. What, what can he do? Um... And yeah, time of possession was about the same. That's what the Bucks needed. Um, and if you go back, um, let's talk about Mahomes. He had 270 yards and two interceptions. Both of those, not really his fault. He just had to try and get it downfield. He had five rushes for 33 yards as he continuously was under tremendous pressure um, throughout this game and used his legs um, to good advantage, even though with that turf toe, which is going to have to be surgically repaired after this season. Tom Brady, he was an MVP. Honestly, he played amazing. Statistically wise, 21 out of 29 for 201 yards and three touchdowns. That was an exceptional performance from Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, although he got bailed out quite a bit. Leonard Fournette, he was amazing in this game. The LSU running back drafted in the first round, really showing his skills in this game. I mean, Leonard Fournette, he was, he was great. I mean, he was breaking so many tackles. They couldn't bring him down at all. He was too physical. 16 rushes for 89 yards and a touchdown. Four catches for 46 yards as well. The Bucks were able to run the ball, run it straight up the gut, um, get the running game going, get Tom Brady comfortable in the pocket, and then do play action off of it. The Buccaneers had a great game plan coming into it based off the running game and then doing some play action, which was really great for Tom Brady in this game. Um, Rojo also had 12 rushes for 61 yards as well. But the main receiver in this game was Rob Gronkowski. Of course, um, Gronk, he was um, really great in Super Bowls like he was this time. One of his greatest performances in the Super Bowl. Six catches for 67 yards and two big touchdowns. Uh, the Chiefs just are unable to guard Gronkowski every time. And now we're going to be talking about Mike Evans, who honestly could have been an MVP for drawing all sorts of stupid calls flopping all over the place but whatever <laughs> mike evans had one catch for 31 yards um pretty much bottled up except that one catch um he was able to draw penalties like i mentioned overall he had a huge impact on this game antonio brown was another huge x factor if i if you remember me mentioning it in my preview video uh, he had five catches for 22 yards and that touchdown to make it 21 to 6 and now for the chiefs again not a whole bunch of support for patrick mahomes uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, the rookie running back, had nine rushes for 64 yards. Um, the Chiefs honestly did okay running the ball against the number one rushing defense, right? But the thing is, they were down big the majority of the game and and couldn't um, run the ball um, efficiently and too much at the time, considering they were down by a considerable margin. Now Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey. Um, Sammy Watkins, these big play guys for the Chiefs are all bottled up by the Buccaneers defense. They were exceptional. I've never seen any defense be able to stop Tyreek Hill, um, Sammy Watkins, and then limit Travis Kelsey for the most part. Um, it was just an unbelievable defensive show by the Buccaneers, and that's why they deserve to win this game. Honestly, the MVP, it should be the Buccaneers defense because they're the ones that led them to the Super Bowl in the first place. Um, Tyreek only had 7 catches for 73 yards. Kelsey had 10 for 133. That's good. But a lot of it came in garbage time, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, that the Buccaneers just played really well defensively. And it, it, was, it was an exceptional job. Um, now we're going to be talking about the game plans. Obviously, we already mentioned it. The pressure on Mahomes, the Buccaneers' defense, the referees, the Brady and the Bucks' game plan was terrific. But now we're going to be diving in deeper to the Buccaneers game plan. It was absolutely executed brilliantly by the Buccaneers defense. I mean, they played it really well. Um, but we're also going to be talking about some drops. I mean, obviously this play, 
is by far what really stings. I mean, Mahomes, he got flushed out of the pocket, started running towards the left, and then he flings literally a sidearm half no-look blazing shot to Tyreek Hill, um, who literally hit him right in the face, like right here in the helmet. How do you not catch that? Honestly, people keep saying, making excuses for Patrick's greatness, saying, oh, he has Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, the best tight end, the fastest receiver in the game. Well, if they're so good, they should have caught these balls, honestly. They should have caught these footballs. Why Why aren't you catching these at all? Travis Kelsey also had a stupid drop. Um, if they're that good, they should have caught these. There's no excuse. And honestly, if, if they're so good, then why couldn't Alex Smith go to the Super Bowl? Why couldn't Alex Smith win an MVP, Super Bowl MVP? He couldn't do that. Mahomes makes them even better than what they are right now. Mahomes make this team on a totally different level. The average quarterback like Alex Smith could not make the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl only because of Patrick Mahomes are they able to go to the Super Bowl. You need to understand that before making uh, blasphemous claims like that. Um, and yeah, so we're also going to be talking about um, another drop catch that Daryl Williams had. This was by far could have been the best play in NFL history, honestly. If you see... It's fourth and eight, game on the line, Mahomes, pressure coming off the edge, he rolls out, goes backwards, continuously tries to find the open man, nobody's getting open, the guy's coming out of his shoes, he jumps up, and then he's about to fall down, and somehow he flicks it while he's two feet above the ground in a superman position, like flat on the ground, and somehow flings it like underhanded to Daryl Williams, an absolute rocket straight to his head, and it is dropped, and Patrick Mahomes... And the Chiefs, including me, cannot believe it. And that was pretty much the end of the game. So that was bad. Um, but look, let's talk about the Buccaneers' defensive game plan. They were tremendous in this game. Shaq Barrett, JPP, continuously wrecked havoc. Devin White with an interception. I mean, the linebackers, their whole defense played well. Carlton Davis, hats off to him. But look, what they did was they played cover two and two man. Basically... Um, cover two is a zone coverage with two safeties far back in the field and then two man which is the same thing two safeties but you're playing man coverage they did this throughout the game pretty much the entire game close to 90 percent of the game they played this kind of coverage which honestly they didn't do much throughout the season which is why Todd Bowles hats off to him he did a great job um, not doing what they normally do on defense um, changing it up making a great game plan playing this cover two um, uh, defensive scheme and playing the safeties deep, not allowing the deep play, um, double teaming Tyree Kill, putting a linebacker um, and some extra attention on Kelsey, and then going one on one physical with the other guys. Uh, there, they stopped the deep play. No deep plays from Patrick Mahomes this uh, in the Super Bowl. They were exceptionally great in guarding sideline to sideline, which is another major part of this game. If you remember outside the numbers, which means close to the sidelines, if you remember in week 12, Patrick Mahomes is 18 out of 22 for 300 yards and three touchdowns outside the numbers um, on the sidelines. But in this game, he was 10 of 22 for 50 yards and two interceptions, throwing outside the numbers. The Buccaneers were able to go sideline to sideline with tremendous speed, contain the outside and guard the perimeter and the, um, uh, you know, the outside um they were really good guarding the sidelines. That was another huge part of this game. Even Patrick realized that he, he, he acknowledged that. Um, and they, they didn't send any sort of extra pressure on Mahomes this week. Only a four-man rush. Vita Vea, Shaq Barrett, Sue, and JPP. And they came home with those two backup tackles. And, uh, and Mahomes against two deep man coverage. He was okay, but he wasn't great. And the Buccaneers went executing it. They were tremendous throughout the season and were by far the best in the big moments of the Super Bowl. But um, the Buccaneers, Todd Bowles said he tried to cover Patrick Holmes' first read, keep him in the pocket, keep him thinking, which is what they did. And uh, normally when, when opponents went in this kind of scheme, the Chiefs would run the ball straight up the gut. But unfortunately, they were down by a lot, and the Buccaneers being the number one rush defense did not really help too much, being in third and longs as well. Buccaneers defense, amazing guys, amazing. Hats off. I I can't believe it how they did this. And uh, that's why they won this game. I mean, 
It's incredible. Congratulations to the Buccaneers once again. A tremendous Super Bowl. And uh, this is the end of my NFL content. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in September for the start of the new season.